Good morning, everybody. It's Dr. Galvin with another post ER shift um, update uh, about the coronavirus and COVID. I uh, hope everybody's having a wonderful holiday weekend. I'm going to be spending my weekend here in the emergency department working the next couple nights. Now, first things first, I know what everybody wants to know. You want to know, Dr. Galvin, why is there a bunch of chairs in your doctor's room at the hospital? That is an excellent question. We've actually had incredibly high volumes here lately and it got so bad, every room in the house was full. Our COVID wards were full that, and we board a lot of psychiatric patients in here. And so somebody had the brilliant idea of taking all of the chairs out of the conference room, storing them in the MD's office and using the conference room for psychiatric patients. Now, apparently we got some bed space, more people got discharged, it didn't actually happen, but of course the chairs are still here. So that's why there are like 10 chairs, including there's actually a chair in our shower in there. So anyway, that's the story of the chairs. Um, for those of you new to the broadcast, my name is Jeffrey Galvin. I'm a board certified emergency medicine physician. I've been posting videos about the virus and some other things since the beginning. And I generally, when I work my ER shifts, I try to give an occasional update. And I think I'll probably update throughout the weekend, this weekend, since you know, people will be around and, and I've had a lot of questions asked. Uh, as usual, we normally start with the numbers. 26.6 million cases worldwide, 874,000 deaths, 6.3 million cases here in the U.S., 191,000 deaths. In my state of North Carolina, 175,000 cases, 2,900 deaths. Um, our hospitalization numbers have been kind of trending down. They bumped up a little bit. Our particular hospital does not Apparently the people in our county don't quite buy into that because our numbers have gone up uh, incredibly high. The hospital has been absolutely full for several weeks now. I think it's starting to moderate a little bit now. Importantly, the, the case positivity rate in the state is down to 6.4%, which is around the lowest it's been so far. So I think the social distancing, the masking, all these things are starting to have an effect. Now, topic for today is this, uh, probably 50 of you have sent me the article about the supercomputer that analyzed all the COVID data and the Brady Kynan storm and they're, they're confused. And I, I get it because it is, um, it is it's a little bit confusing, but very elegantly explains a lot of the things that we see in these sick COVID patients. So to give you a little backdrop, um, there's a thing called the Summit Supercomputer. I can't remember where it's at, but it's at one of the big government facilities. And it's the second fastest computer in the entire world. And they basically fed in data on 40,000 different genes from 17,000 um, samples. And I'm assuming that all these samples are people that had COVID. And it, it did two point, it looked at 2.5 billion different gene combinations over the course of a week. And so to, to have a supercomputer work on a problem for a week is a huge amount of computational power. And what they found was these very interesting associations between bradykinin and, and the renin-angiotensin system and the symptoms of COVID. And it makes a lot of sense. And so I've many times told you that the virus binds to this ACE2 receptor. There's a lot of them in our nose and that's where it first establishes. And then there are ACE2 receptors in our lungs and our blood vessels and things like that. And I do have some notes because I, I wanna make sure I explain this as clear as possible because it gets a little dense and I, I apologize for this, but people have asked, so I'm trying to, to accommodate. Um, so um, what it looks like the virus is doing is it's, it's hijacking this, this renin-angiotensin system and it's upregulating expression of these ACE2 receptors. One of the reasons we think maybe kids don't get it as much or get it as bad is because they don't have a lot of these ACE2 receptors. Well, the virus goes, binds to the nose and then in the more severe cases, it starts telling the body to make more of these receptors, especially in places like the lungs and the intestines and the blood vessels and the heart. And so that makes it more, those areas more susceptible to the virus infecting. Now, um, this the virus kind of hijacks this renin-angiotensin system that has to do with fluid regulation um, and uh, kidney function and really regulates things like blood pressure. But in, in particular, it, it stops the body from breaking down this hormone called bradykinin. And bradykinin 
um, essentially increases vascular permeability. So if you, if you raise those levels, what happens is your vessels become very leaky and fluid starts leaking out and fluid starts leaking into the, the lungs, for example. And if you've got fluid in your lungs, it makes it hard to breathe. Um, as this vascular permeability increases, um, you, you get these pulmonary functions, which are pulmonary symptoms that we see as a common symptom in COVID. The fluid leaks into the lungs and then other immune modulating chemicals leak in as well. Um, including a thing called hyaluronic acid. And hyaluronic acid is actually a chemical that's actually used to make soaps and, um, and uh, lotion sort of smooth and, and viscous. And if you combine fluid with hyaluronic acid, you get basically what's called a hydrogel, which is almost like this foamy jello-like substance and you cannot breathe through jello. And that line, lines in the lungs and it starts filling up the alveoli which do the oxygen exchange and suddenly the, the, the lungs aren't working well. And it explains why ventilators, putting people on the ventilator was not helping many of these people because if you've got your lungs filled with basically jello, you can't ventilate and the ventilators aren't gonna work and then the, the barotrauma, the pressure that they use keeps getting upped and up because we're not getting any oxygen um, exchange and that causes trauma to the lungs and, and that's why we think that people that, uh, with COVID that get intubated have such a high mortality rate and why we now are doing everything we can to not intubate people when they come in sick with COVID. It also explains probably why so many hospitalized patients, we think maybe up to one in five people that are hospitalized with COVID end up with some sort of heart problem because there are quite a few of these ACE2 receptors in both the heart and the blood vessels. And um, it, since it directly sort of stimulates these, um, you get this bradykinin storm and you get some common things that you also see with ACE inhibitor medicines, decreased blood pressure, arrhythmias. Um, and then, you know, we think about half the hospitalized patients actually get neurologic symptoms. Um, I actually have a friend from high school that, that contacted me because her daughter has got COVID brain. She's in nursing school and is having a hard time concentrating. And there's concentration problems, but also dizziness, um, delirium, even strokes and seizures have been related to the neurologic effects. And again, what we think the, the virus is doing is causing fluid and inflammation in the brain. And it's also breaking down the blood brain barrier, allowing inflammatory molecules to enter the brain and cause inflammation. And we think that that may be also related to this bradykinin storm. Um, some of the other weird symptoms we're seeing with COVID are actually common side effects of ACE inhibitors, which are blood pressure medicines that do some of the same things, but on a much lower scale. And those things are like things like a dry cough or loss of taste and smell are actually known side effects of ACE inhibitors. And so it makes sense that because the virus is affecting these ACE receptors and bradykinin interacts with this stuff, that a lot of it is explained by sort of what we're, what we're seeing there. Um, it also raises the question of, you know, a lot of potential treatments. So if indeed it's bradykinin and, uh, and all these other, uh, our, our other processes are underlying, than drugs that either reduce bradykinin or reduce hyaluronic acid. Now, many of these drugs have not been tested yet in COVID, but there's about eight or 10 things that now look like pretty reasonable things to study because it really may have a beneficial effect, especially in these sicker people. Also, vitamin D has a pretty big effect. And we've been talking about vitamin D, you know, from the beginning, I've been encouraging our patients to take it. I've been, you know, I've done a whole video about vitamin D and it looks like vitamin D is also involved in this whole process. So, um, you know, most of these drugs are speculative. They need to be studied. Um, they need to have good studies done about them. And those have not yet been done. But I think that what they're saying from this study about you know, that the supercomputer did is that there is sort of a very elegant underlying framework that explains a lot of the weird things we see with COVID, which, you know, anything that increases our understanding is gonna increase our ability to treat it. And so I, I know that's a lot of science there, and I apologize if, if 
I wasn't clear explaining it, but I do think that the article, and I'll try to, to, to link to it in the notes here on, on YouTube, um, it explains it in a, in a pretty elegant um, way. I'm going to be working again tonight and tomorrow night, so I think I'll, I'll, I may post tomorrow. I'll definitely post Monday morning. Everybody be safe. Be careful this holiday weekend. Wash your hands. Wear your masks. Look out for yourselves. Look out for your families. Look out for those around you. Be careful on the roads and everything else because these holiday weekends, you know, we see a lot of bad stuff in the emergency department. Please don't come see me here this weekend. Take care of yourselves. Enjoy the holiday. I will be back. Please subscribe, like us, all that other stuff, and I will be back soon. Have a great weekend. Bye.